Yo, check this out. You tune into Lounging with Script. It's your boy DJ Script, Talk of the City, NYC. We're in the building today with a very special guest. You understand what I mean? And you guys know how long I've been around this, trying to put my thumbs on it. So here we go. We got my man, Air Harris. Airs or Air? Yes, Airs. Air with an S. With an S. Airs. Yeah. Yeah. So if you say Air, you got to put an S in front of it. Airs. Harris, yes, sir. in yes, the sir. building today, uh, we're going to go over some of the impressive stuff that he's been doing in the industry or before the industry, a Harlem native, yes, so sir. now you already know he stayed drippy. Uh, speaking of drip, we're going to get right into the drip report. Like, like I always tell you guys, it's better... You know, to just keep it simple, a nice haircut. Did I take my do-rag off? I took my do-rag off, right? You did, you did. All oh, right, it, it even feel like it. Nice haircut, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, some fly clothes, clean clothes. And I know everybody these days have a different preference when it comes to designer brands. Me, I have so many. Um, this morning or this afternoon, I was running late. So I saw, you know, my polo hoodie on the couch. I just grabbed it. I had the Yeezys in the car, you know what I'm saying? The Yeezys, Yeezys, I had those. Know. What, those are what? The three 70s, yeah. 730s, whatever. <laughs> There's so many different from different ones, right? These are the lost socks. Track. I don't right? lost track. There's so many. So I had those in the car, and then I had my shorts. I even forgot my jewelry, but I had my Tom Ford shade, you know what I'm saying? And we right here today with Mr. Ayers. What you got on going on over there, man? It's a calm day today. You know, we denimed out. You feel me? This is actually a custom jacket. Word? Um, I got my name on the back. Stop playing. This guy's not playing. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. show the camera, baby. Saying, you know, you know, He's you from know, Harlem. You know. He's definitely from Harlem. Calm day, you know? <laughs> this, this is a Harlem <laughs> thing, man. You know what I'm saying? And then I got, I got my classic uh, no caps, you feel me? Because I don't cap in my rap, so I wear the brimless caps because I don't cap. So, oh, the point, he, right? yo, the guy, <laughs> listen, we're going to get into this guy anyway. <laughs> you know, he, he's very special. What else you got going on? The shoes? Shoes, this is calm. Shout out to Snipes, you feel me? Uh, it's, a new, it's a new sneaker called Javis. I might be saying it Oh, wrong. Javis. Javis, yeah, but they're real okay. comfortable. I like that. He different. Yeah. He different. Like, I like to wear stuff that a lot of people aren't wearing, you know? Like, that's the whole purpose of the drip report, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's dope. All right, very calm, denim down, and, you know... The name of the shoes again? Because I got to get used to it. Javis. Javis? I'm going to say Javis, but ja I'll say Javis because it sounds better. But it's J-A-V-I-S. Okay, there you go. Yeah. He got that going on. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? Kid is from Harlem. Got his name on his back. Typical uh, Jim Jones, Cameron, right, right, artifact. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? There you go, Harlem legend. So we're in the building. Yo, check this out. We're going to get right into it, man. What's going on in the world, man? I used to hear... Females say, you know, when they're tired with dudes cheating on them or mistreating them, they're just going to get an old person, not any regular old person. They're just going to find themselves an old, rich guy, black or white, but most of them keep saying they're going to find themselves an a, a old, rich, rich, white guy. Right. And they're just going to be with them because they, they, they're tired of, of the BS. I used to think that was a joke. And I said, I I was I was like, y'all funny. And I was I always thought that was mad funny. Well, not with uh Khalees coming around. Khalees proved that was not no joke, man. You know what I'm saying? It's it's, it's a, real out here, bro. Yeah, it's getting real out here. It's real I, out here, bro. I, I, I don't understand. Maybe when they were, you know what I'm saying, saying who you gonna call, she thought it was Bill Murray. Uh, well, you know what I'm saying? I mean, Ghostbusters, but <laughs> I'm thinking... He taking it back right now, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Bill, Bill Murray... In that room with Bill Murray, by the way, it's just... Bill Murray. It's just... It's just... Uh, it, it just happened so fast, right? I guess, you know, her, her meal sick is not bringing the boys to the yard anymore. <laughs> it's, it's bringing out the senior like, citizens. how it used to be. Nah. It's, it's, it's bringing out the senior citizens <laughs> to the yard. You know what I'm saying? Listen, man... Go ahead, Anna Cole Smith, with your bad self. I see what you're doing. We see you, mama. We listen, see you. we see you, man. And, and yo, listen, just know Dr. Uma Johnson is not going to be happy with this. You know what I mean? He's going to catch a fit. But uh, you do you, man. You do you, Sandra Nelson. Y'all don't know who Sandra Nelson is, right? That name kind of sounds familiar, but I would have to, like. You got to Google it. Well, yeah. Sandra Nelson 
is Roberto Cavalli's girlfriend. Now, if you know Roberto Cavalli, you know, he's a fashion designer, I think Italian guy. He's, he's up there. I think he's like 72. Now, if you see, now, you see where I'm going? So, basically, he has a young, pretty thing. So, I guess that's the trend. That's his trophy. That, well, forget trophy. That's the trend. That's the trend. When they want to live that rock star life, that, you know, that, that, that very luxurious life, they find themselves a rich millionaire. Yeah. Oh, man. So, I got to work on my money. Yeah, we got to get that money, <laughs> I got, bro. I got to work on <laughs> Well, go ahead, Khalees. I ain't got no problem. Word around town is the white girl's been doing this for centuries. Yeah, so, black not girl's new. not catching up. It's not in no. Do you. It's yeah. not in you. Do you. Yo, <laughs> what's up, Horace? Mr. Horace. I got to call you Mr. One of the reasons I have to do that is because... You attended, and I know Air Airs Airs Harris, but you Ayers know Harris. Mr. Airs Harris yeah. Harris. Uh, one of the reasons I have to uh, put the Mister before your name is, you graduated from one of the most challenging school in the CUNY system, City College. City College, yes, sir, yes. My family went there. Really? Yes, my nice. older brother went there. I took a few classes there. I'm a, I'm a CUNY student myself. Nice. As a matter of fact, I'm a CUNY graduate myself. Congrats, but I'll drink now, to that. That's yo. right. Be outside. That's yeah. right. And then Be you outside. went you went on to um major in something that is very, you know, aligned with the industry. Advertising and public relations. Yes, sir. Media I was communications. Like, wow. This kid is something special. <laughs> so now walk us through the process of picking a major in college and it just so happened to be advertising and public relations. How did that come about? Well, it's funny. Um, I actually started off as an engineering major. Really? Yeah. It was I, too tough for you. I got into the school definitely too tough, yo. Definitely too tough. Like I always was like someone that wanted to know how things work. Like even a CD player, you know, I'm, I'm addicted to music, so it's like, how does a little disc with some zeros and ones digitally like transfer sound to your ears? So I'm like, I want to be an engineer to learn this stuff. You know, I'm like, this is crazy. It's cool. Um, so I got into City College, the Grove School of Engineering, as a mechanical engineer. I did it for two years, but I was also a very I was a party animal in college, you know, just like, like me. I like to turn up, you know, and then I ended up joining a fraternity and then it's just like doing parties and events and engineering got a, when you're an engineer, like that engineering program is very strict and most of the students there are very like focused, Focus. tunnel vision. And I'm over here turned up, like still trying to do it, but it just wasn't working out for me. So it messed up my GPA. I almost got kicked out of school oh, wow. because I was, I was just going crazy because my GPA went uh, below average. But I got it together. I was undecided for one semester. And then I had this friend who she was like, yo, you should look into advertising because you're always promoting music. Like I was always promoting music like audio. mainstream music or like something that just released. Like you could come to me if you wanted to hear it first. You know, I'm like, yo, oh, wow. tap in like, yo, this new song just dropped. Like, you know, so I was always sharing stuff like that. And she was like, yeah, look into advertising because you're always promoting music and fashion. I was like, you know what? Why not? You know? Well, so I took it up, graduated, started as entertainment. That's dope. We here. Went, it's so crazy. Uh, can you pass me a piece of napkin, please, if you don't mind? The business that we in, you hardly hear the stories. Right. Right. Thank you very much. As a matter of fact, uh, as a matter of fact, my nephew, he's a college grad himself. And I, I was talking to somebody on the phone with regards to him. And they were like, who, your nephew? If it wasn't for you, he wouldn't be where he's at right now. He's a college teacher. Mm. Well, not college teacher. He's a teacher. And I was like, wow, people really don't respect education out here. Nah. But looking at you and the things that you did in terms of educating yourself to be where you at right now as far as a person that's in the game, rubbing shoulders with uh, very influential people that's in the game, influencers and stuff like that. This is very uh, commending. Uh, it's it's very respectful, man. I respect that. Thank you, bro. Now, Appreciate that. you're a Harlem native. Yes, sir. You were born in Harlem. Born and raised. Harlem Hospital, everything. Right? Talk to us 
about what it means to grow up in Harlem? Bro, Harlem is, that's, I'd say it's like one of, the, it's the heart of entertainment. You know what I'm saying? Like if you go back to the 1920s, you know, Harlem Renaissance, that's when like black people was really getting their time to shine, like to entertain. You know what I mean? Like Apollo Theater, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of legend, there's a lot of history in Harlem when it comes to like jazz and music and just entertainment in general, you know? So I'm honored to just be around that, that energy, you know? You you know you do know Harlem has different generation. What what what's your generation? What generation you came? Did you came from the uh, uh, Lord Finesse, uh, Big L, mm. uh, uh, Mason Camel uh, generation? Which generation did you came from? I was a, definitely a part of the Dipset generation. Cameron, Mace, Jim Jones, Joel Santana. That was definitely my lane. Even Lil Wayne, you know, Lil Wayne used to be in Harlem sometimes. All the time. Like, um, Rapping with Joel. Even Diddy, like, you know, Diddy did an event. I hate to bring it up, but Diddy did an event at City College. Yeah, yeah I was going like, to talk about that. Yeah, Were you, you know, there? I wasn't there. No, I wasn't there. I was, yeah, uh, I was well, in college at that time, you know, but um, I just feel like that's like my spirit animal sometimes, you know, because it's like I kind of feel like I be following in his footsteps organically, you know, it's not, it wasn't forced, you know, but it's like, Diddy was at City College. I was at City College. He did events at City College. I did events at City College. My mine didn't get shot up like it did, but you know, you know. <laughs> well, I will say you pulled the inspiration from him, which is for a good sure. thing. For sure. Is, but listen, not not trying to deviate from our conversation and not in a negative way. You do look like the Inspector Gadget kind of guy <laughs> who's gonna come in a situation and you're trying to figure every little working part of it. Yep. Every little I want to know how the wheels are turning from bro. a camera yep. to a computer mm -hmm. to a well, a camera is a computer anyways. Facts. Uh, to a, a a CD player, another form of computer. To I mean anything that has to do with technology, you look like the minute you sit, it sucks in. you in. Yeah. Like you just, <laughs> you know, you understand what I mean? Yeah, one hundred percent, bro. I always like to just I like to look past the like the physical, what we can see, you know? There's always well, more to it. It's so crazy. Me and this guy, we have a relation. I was just, I was the same way because I'm a science student. Mm. I'm a uh, biochemistry, biology, bioinformatic student. Uh, that's big, and, bro. And that's one of the reasons why I did that. When I was a kid, I always wanted to know why is the green, why is the leaves are green? Yeah. Like, why do they change color during a certain time of the right, year? Like, why is water wet? Right. <laughs> Why is the sky blue? I'm dead serious. Yeah, nah, and that's no ghost face right there. That's mm -hmm. just being inquisitive about my environment and trying to understand the physical and the scientific reasons to why these things are the way they are. Exactly. Uh, why do we need oxygen? Why do plants take in carbon dioxide instead of oxygen? Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Real, yeah. So I, I, was, I was bugging out. Mm -hmm. I, well, really... The environment that I was in, it looked like I was bugging out. But reality, the realistically, I was asking the right the right questions and I had the right hypothesis. Yeah. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? So that led me into becoming a science guy. Mm. And once I started finding out why is the uh you know the leaves are green, why uh, you know, because of the chlorophyll. <laughs> you know that that radiate a particular frequency on the right. spectrum. Everything's frequency. So so Flex. there you go, frequency and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And the water water uh, is wet because water is a universal solvent because it has you know it has hydrogen bonds and the hydrogen bonds are polarized. It's a smart guy right here. <laughs> you understand what I'm don't saying? Sleep, so, don't sleep. Yeah, and then and then it started making sense to me. Then right. you know. That's that's the relationship I have with you. Mm -hmm. But forget enough of this uh, uh, scientific stuff, man. <laughs> let's 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 move on. Nah, I respect so, that, bro. Because like a lot of people think knowing stuff like that is nerdy or not cool. Mm -hmm. That's that's the coolest shit to know. You know. What but I'm I will say, you know, growing up in urban America or in the communities where we're from. Talking like that, you ain't gonna get no girls. Right, right. They're gonna look at you crazy. They're gonna look at you crazy. <laughs> What's up you, with this guy? Like? You ain't gonna get no box. You better not talk like that. You better bring us. You better bring your BB gun outside. You know well, that's back in the days. <laughs> not now. Now they want intelligent men. 
<laughs> nah, it's facts. It's crazy how things switch, right? Yeah, they switch. Yeah. Now, they want guys like us mm-hmm. so we know we can lead the nation. All right. Um, you grew up in Harlem, mm-hmm. Mace, Cameron, era. Now, what's your relationship with those guys? Do you have any relationship with Dipset? Um, not personally, but like just growing up, like I listened to a lot of their music heavy, you know, like that's that's what I grew up around, just the Harlem, the Harlem swag, you know, like listen to I Can't Feel My Face with Joel Santana, Lil Wayne, like yeah, was a dope all the one. classic, like all the classic Jim Jones, Cameron, like if you're in Harlem, if you wasn't listening to them, it's like, what's going on with you, you know? So, um... I was just really always a big music head, like, and I gotta, I gotta shout out my mom for that, you know, because she, dope. she had um, a CD player, not a CD player. She had a binder full of CDs of everybody, like from LL Cool J, Stevie Wonder, The Whispers, Neo, Michael, Michael Jackson, Jackson, like Whitney you name Houston. it, you name it. She had Madonna. a Madonna, everybody, bro, like Jada Talk Kiss, about preach. <laughs> yeah, like, and I'm like, wow. So I, when I got a CD player for Christmas. I just went in a music rabbit hole. I was just playing music nonstop. Then I had got a radio, and then it was like, oh wow! Like I'm just always listening to music. You know, it's like music was always my thing. You know, it was it was kind of like my getaway, my escape. You know. Lucky for me, and thankfully, I got to see you in your natural habitat. Bring on the energy. Bring the energy, baby. Bring yes, the sir. energy. Yes, sir. That's a movement. It's a music. I- you know, I've been to a million showcases. You can ask Janelle. Shout out to Janelle, by shout the way. Shout out to Janelle. Fact, shout I wouldn't even to, be here right now. If yeah, for shout Janelle, out to Janelle. Me? me and Janelle, we're going through our trial and tribulation in the industry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You Real know, out pouring here. out our heart yeah. to people uh, who doesn't appreciate us, supporting people after a while when they get what they want or they end up getting they to the place, who you are. They, they kick us out or mm-hmm. whatever. That, mm-hmm. Well, that's the life of you know, cementing yourself in the industry. You got to go through these trial and tribulations, mm-hmm. uh, which is, it's not a bad thing. It's just a learning process anyways. Right. Shout out to her because she introduced me to you and she invited me to one of your shows. I'm going to be honest. I didn't even want to go because I've been <laughs> to a million showcases. I don't know any rapper or any artist out of New York City during my time that got put on because of a showcase. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because I've been to a lot. Right. I don't know if you know about, you know, the Mental Supreme uh, showcase down in LES. I used to frequent that a lot and a whole bunch of other showcase and SOBs and Mm -hmm. nobody got put on so I kind of got discouraged. I felt that. But, you know, because it's part of the game and networking and meeting people and I'm dealing with a whole bunch of new young people and they have energy so you know what? I went to your stuff. I went to your uh, your event. Appreciate you coming, show, bro. Yeah. And I got to see you at your natural habitat. And I must say, man, you are extremely professional and calm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you, bro. I try. I try, to, yo. <laughs> to deal with that kind of energy. Yeah, you know it's a saying? lot. It's a lot, bro. It definitely takes a lot of energy, for sure. <laughs> now, and I have my nephew performing your show. Shaq, shout Big out Rome. Big Rome. Yes. Yeah. Shout out hey. Big Rome. My guy killed it too. He definitely brought the energy for sure. Yeah, he, yeah, that's why he, he does definitely best. brought the energy. energy. Yeah. <laughs> now, walk me through the steps and the process of putting something like that together. How did you, you know, come up with the energy? I mean, the, the idea or the notion of bring the energy? Is it because of New York City? Because we always hype? <laughs> or is it because of the game? Now, walk me through the process, man. Um, so Bring the Energy started in 2018. Um, that's good. If I'm gonna be really honest, like for those who, like, I know we all smoke weed and stuff, but for those who do psychedelics, you know, I ain't gonna lie, I was, I was tripping off some psychedelics <laughs> in 2018, you feel me? And, um, I came to this realization that, like, everything is energy, like, everything, you know, like, everything's vibrating at its own frequency. I'm like, yo, everything's energy. So in 2018, I'm like, yo, I know all these artists, all these local artists. I already do events. I got all these venues that I'm building relationships with. I should do a showcase, you know? So I, I called it Bring the Energy. Like, and um, yeah, it just, it just took off from there. Like I would invite like 10 to 20 artists. And at first I used to lock in artists for other people's events, like major stage and, you know, all these other platforms. 
And I'm like, why not just do it for myself, you know, like for my own platform, you know what I mean? Like I'm giving all these other platforms their bread and not seeing nothing. Mm-hmm. The energy's not getting reciprocated. So I'm like, let me create my own shit. You, you get, feel me? And that's <laughs> hip hop. That's hip hop. That's it. That's how it works. You and know? Let me let me piggyback off of what you said. You're being that we science people, you mm-hmm. engineering, and I'm biochemistry, biology, mm-hmm. and bioinformatics. You're not, you're not, you're not wrong. You're hundred percent correct. Everything is energy. Yeah. Once there's no energy, there's no life form. Right. As a matter of fact, energy is transferred or transformed or transferred from one form to another. To another. Yep. Energy can neither be created. Or destroy. Or destroy. Yep, yep. That's you the know. laws of thermodynamics. Yep, yep. You understand? That. Mm-hmm. And that's the beauty of hip hop. Mm-hmm. Hip hop has a lot of highly intelligent young people and old people and veterans and seasoned people in it. Mm-hmm. We need to come together and bring that forward yep. and show the beauty of being highly educated, high-value men mm-hmm. who respect what we do in our community. 100%, bro. You understand what I'm saying? So bring, it, bring the energy. It's perfect, especially for a city like this. New York, come on, bro. Come on. You, you understand what sense. I'm saying? Yeah. Now, while putting bring the energy together in terms of being a platform while you're on your journey, what was the most challenging difficult thing that you encountered in the process? <clears throat> um, probably would say, hmm, I don't know, it'd be so many like ups and downs. Like sometimes I just, I ain't gonna lie, I would have doubts in how the turnout would be, you know, just cause like locking in artists sometimes, um, you're not sure, like, I'm depending on the artist to bring the crowd, you know? That's how I do my shows. It's like, you're an artist, you're a creative. You, you know, it's not just about the music. Can you bring the energy? That means, like, a crowd of people, crowd control, good vibes, you know what I'm saying? So, um, I'd say really the hardest part is just putting everything together, because it's a lot of following up you got to do, you know? Like, you got to lock in a DJ, you got to... Follow up with the venue. Sometimes the venue be busy. You got to keep calling, keep calling just to lock in a date. You know, it's like, yo, what's the 411? I'm trying to get it started like right now, right now, you know? So it's that. Then it's like, you got to meet their requirements. Sometimes you got to pay something up front or you got to meet a bar minimum. Then it's like, you got to lock in the artist. You know, how many artists? You got to think about like the time you have to do everything. Like, and I'm, you know me, I'm a very like, organizational structure person. So I'm breaking you everything look like down. That too. Yeah, I'm breaking it all down to the T, you know what I'm saying? So like it, it gets it takes a lot of energy, you know what I'm saying? It takes Bring a lot of energy. energy. Bring the energy, you know? <laughs> so I gotta put in a lot of energy just to create this environment, you know, this this community, you know, this movement. Um but yeah it's really the hardest process is really just putting it together. Like <laughs> you gotta make the flyers. Like and especially when you you're starting from scratch and you don't have a team. You know, it's really just you. You got to reach out to a lot of people and build trust with a lot of people, you know, and, and get them to be on the same wavelength as you, the same understanding. Like, yo, this is what I'm creating. This is what I got. I got this idea. Let's manifest it, make it happen, and let it grow, you know? So fortunately, with the, you know, with the power of God, I've been able to do this for like, what, four years now? Oh, that's so, dope. Yeah, since 2018, we in 2023 well, now. So uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's 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 going on. Uh, it's what five years? Five years. Yeah. 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 So now, doing your show, I see you. You know, one unique thing I noticed about your show, because like I told you, I've been to a million showcases. I've been doing this for for a while, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of turned off by showcases. I don't. No, like, I feel you. I, feel I, <laughs> I I go if I have to go if I have to meet somebody or network or you know do this and and that if and if it's a good showcase because mm-hmm. you know the feeling is kind of you know I'm kind of numb to certain things. Of course. What do you look for in your artists or the artists that are performing doing your showcase? What do you look for in particular? Mm. 
first thing when the artist grabs the mic? What do you look for? Bro, you got to have like, you got to have that energy, bro. It's not no like, yo, like high energy, high energy at all times. Like, yo, what up, New York? What up? You know what I'm Keep saying? Like, bouncing. Yeah. Like, don't be like, you can't be laid back at a show, bro. Like, no matter how cool you are, like, this is your time <laughs> to shine, bro. This is your you time to me? go berserk. Yeah. Go crazy. Especially at bring the energy at all things. It's called bring the energy. We don't need no low vibrations in here. You feel me? So you got to have high energy. So that's the first thing. If you grab that mic and it's just like... You're not looking at nobody. You kind of got the head down. Like, yo, what up? Bro? Like, all right, you already, you're already, you already canceled. Lost. Yeah, you're already, you're already, you're already just, off. Yeah, but um, what I do to try to prevent that from even happening is, you know, the artist. I'm picky with the artists I lock in. I don't really just lock in any artist. Okay, so you look for a certain character. Yes, yeah, okay. you gotta have certain things. Like one, I gotta fuck with your music. Like, you know, I gotta fuck with the music. Like, you gotta bring. Got to bring the vibe, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, people got to fuck with your music. The music got to mean something. Yeah, like, gotta something. you got to have a dope work ethic, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got to see that you hustling, like, you're consistent with your music, like, you're hungry to perform, you know? And I know it's not easy for artists, you know? I'm an artist myself, like, I get it. You know, it's not easy to bring out a crowd, you know, get people to support you and stuff. So that's why I created something where it's like, all right, you have that opportunity to get paid, you know, if you can bring at least 10 people. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's an incentive. You know, it gives you more of a reason to push, push, like promote every day, promote every week, send it out. People love personal invitations. So it's like, just posting it on Instagram is not enough. You got to share push it. it out. Push, push it. it to the limit. Push it, bro. Push, push it, it to the limit. You feel me? And it's like, it, it all ties in hand. If you're consistent, if people see fire quality music videos, you're dropping like every week, every month. People going to eventually people start fucking with you. You're going to start biting. You know what I'm saying? That's just how everything works, you know? So it's like, I look for that in an artist. And recently, because I've been doing it for so long now, I started off just working with like artists I know. But as things grow, you know, more artists come in and I got it. I like to give everyone an opportunity. So now I'm open to give all artists an opportunity. That's why I don't even really charge. I try not to charge artists to perform. Sometimes, you know, it, it depends, you know what I'm saying? But... Um, it's either you pay to perform or you pay to enter. So if you're not gonna pay to perform, you at least gotta pay that thirty dollar entry. One or the other. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Talk, man. Like, and again, with the difference between my show is like, if I am charging you to perform, you do have the opportunity to make your money back plus more. I've had artists in 2018, like since, that have bought 30, 40 people. You know what I'm saying? If I'm charging twenty, twenty five dollars, thirty dollars at the door, and you're getting ten dollars, and you bring in thirty people. You do the math. That's three hundred dollars you just made this uh, night. You know what I'm saying? You know what? Like, I wasn't gonna say it, but I'm gonna say it anyway. I used to do showcases myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not an easy fate. It's nah. it's it's very challenging. Yeah. Um, but I see your formulas working. Yeah. Um, keep it up. Keep Thank grinding. You. Keep pushing it. Now I see you. You know you brushing shoulders with a couple of people that's in the game. As, you know, that have a level of influence in the game. Now, how did you, uh, I'm, it's a two-part question. How did you align yourself to ensure that these people take you serious? Because people in the industry or in the game don't really take people serious like facts, that. Facts, so. What, what you had to do to make sure that they respect your grind and your hustle? It's really the consistency. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't... Like, for me, you know, I went to school for advertising. I learned all about social media marketing and how to build awareness to any brand. Like, it's not just artists. I could build awareness to a restaurant or any business. You know what I'm saying? Well, it don't matter. This. Yeah, I do this. Like, I do this. So it's like, if you're just consistent with everything you're doing, like, eventually people see your work ethic and they either going to get on board or they not. You know what I'm saying? But it's also follow-ups you know so it's like you you can't feel no type of way if like you reach out to someone and maybe the, at first they don't respond to you or you know they you think you're they're ignoring you we all got a life to live we all got a lot going on i understand if you don't get back to me the first time you know i'm gonna keep reaching out to you you know i'm gonna be i'm a i'm gonna build awareness like yo bro this is what i got going on this is who i'm working with like let's work let's tap in either you're gonna leave me on scene or eventually we're gonna set something up you know so my follow-ups, my follow-throughs, I'm going to just put it out there. Like, Gabe, I've been tapped in with Gabe since 2018. Like, I was about to ask you that. Me and Gabe how did, did you, talk. How like, did you establish a relationship with Gabe? Because he doesn't look like a, 
um, extrovert person. <laughs> you look yeah, more yeah. like an introvert. Yeah, he just be chilling, like, laid back. In, yeah. You know, in the cut. Facts, facts. Try not to be with too many people. How facts. did you lock in with him? Really, it was just reaching out. Like, you know, I saw his platform. I saw what he was doing, you know, and I saw a lot of myself in him, you know? So I'm like, I feel like there's a lot of synergy in what we got going on, you know? Cause I'm, but that's 2018. That 2018, 2018, nobody knew who Gabe was. Right. But I did, though. I saw but the you vision. Did. You yeah, saw I, the vision. I saw the vision. Because, like, we, I created my interview platform and my shows around the same time that he had on the radar. So it's like, I kind of already saw what was going on. So I would send artists that I was working with to him. Like, yo, you should check out this artist. Check out that artist. Um, you know, and then I just kept the relationship like that. And then I'm like, all right, as I'm doing the shows... I'm like, all right, how do I make my shows bigger? Like, what do I have to do to make something grow? I got to create sponsors and partnerships and get other platforms or influencers on board, you know? So it really just took some reaching out, you know what I mean? Showing them what I got going on and then... You respect it. You know what I mean? Then it's like, all right, yeah, I'm going to come check it out. You know? So you did know... Okay, what I meant to ask is... Was Gabe at Power 105 at that time, or he wasn't? Or, yeah. Or he was? Yeah, he was. So he was just silent in the background until the on the radar blew up. Exactly. I mean, from what I know, because I'm don't, i not one to tell this man's story, but like from what I remember or what I know is, I know he you know, worked with Power 105 One. I believe he also was running the social media or something, you know, yeah. so. I heard um, that. And then created his platform with Power 105 One, you know? Which, well, he... You know? Got him to where he's at, and much respect to you, Gabe. You feel me? <laughs> I, I I look at his um his structure in terms of how he put it together. He's a very smart dude. Yeah, yeah. I mean that it's so crazy. You you have people that that had see I do know how to speak English that had this opportunity and they dropped the ball. Mm. It happens. And it happens. Gabe did not. <laughs> because his vision worked out for him. All right. And all he right. kept it consistent. And he didn't stop that consistency, and, yeah. And and he had a commitment to it. Mm-hmm. Which is a, a good thing. So when you have an opportunity, don't think you're better than anybody else. Mm-mm. Don't be slick mouthing people thinking that you know you 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 on that level. And they're not there. Yeah. You could lose that any second. Real quick, bro. And especially oh. the industry is really small, bro. Like Absolutely. a lot of people know a lot of people, you know, and people talk. <laughs> not only only small, <laughs> very slippery. Yes. Because yes. they you know, if you if you hurt somebody's feeling and there's an opportunity they're gonna give you, they might take it away from you. Yes. One hundred percent. A lot of y'all 100%. hurting people's feelings, by the way. <laughs> And I try not to do that so much, y'all. I try not. A lot of y'all. <laughs> it could be the homeless man on on the side of the building. You hurt that homeless man feeling, and it's not your day. And they ask that homeless man a question about you. It's over. It'd be like <laughs> the homeless man probably be like, man, he's an asshole. I won't right. even put him on the team. I won't even give him that position. Like, nah, I'm not. And boom, you. next thing you know, they get back in the limo or the Range Rover or whatever they came in at. Came in and they drove off, and your opportunity is gone because of your mouth. Yeah. Sometimes you have to embrace people. Yes. Well, not sometimes. <laughs> you have to embrace people and respect people's positions in life. Mm-hmm. That's what I had to say. Now it's facts, bro, because at the same time, it's like somebody might start off here and then be here. Absolutely. You know? Like, that's for any of us for in example, this room, anybody. You know what I'm saying? For example, I don't want to sound cocky. A lot of you have podcasts, right? Forget about it. I'm here now. That's it. That's it. Thoughts empty. <laughs> y'all can't come with all... Oh, nah. Y'all got to bring some energy. Bring that motherfucking energy. You feel me? All right? Gangster. And then y'all got to have <laughs> accents too, man. Y'all can't be sounding like Yankees all the time and claiming the motherland. <laughs> you feel me? You know what I'm saying? Yo, we could go either funny, way. Dude. Right, right. We right. Could, look, we're not just... Americanized. We Haitianized too. I just right. start speaking Creole, real Creole. That's, Some I like find that speak. fire. I can't speak that. See, I find that fire. Est-ce que tu as dit? Et bon Creole qui parle là. 
But you know what? Let's get off of that. Let's get off of that. Let's let's still my man. Let's still my man in the building. My man is oh Ez Harris. Shit, he actually bro. went to college. Yeah. He got a college degree. Right. He did not stay in the hallway and smoke weed, by the way. No, no. I was smoking <laughs> weed, but you're not in the hallway. No, well, he smoked <laughs> weed. But but listen, it's fascinating <laughs> because you smoke weed and got a degree. Yes. Many right. of them smoke weed and got no degree. Right, right, right. Y'all ran up your parents' bills or the burst up the top and bell, making the government waste money. Y'all came out with no degree. So I respect you for that. Thank you, bro. Thank and you. this is why I got a problem with niggas, with people with college degrees, because I don't have one. Yeah. Go get one. Get one. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it's honestly easier now. Like, you can go online. Go online. You can even right? go to school. It's man. easy. <laughs> it's like food stamps. Go get one, man. Don't yeah. hate. Don't oh, hate on that motherfucker you, you can't be like. Come you know on, what I'm saying? Bro. Come on. And like, we, I'm here to show love to everybody. I just want that love reciprocated. You know what I'm saying? There's money out here for all of us. There's room out here for us all to win. Like, bro, money it comes from zeros and ones, bro. You, you feel said me? you said there's money. Do you know? Let me ask you a question. Damn, I didn't want to go there, but we're gonna go nah, there today. There, bro. I'm here. Listen, let me ask you a question. If someone is bringing you money at your leisure, the person is actually doing the work and saying, yo, here, what's your cash out? I got 700 for you. I got 800 for you. How will you embrace a person like that? Somebody who's paying me for a service? Bringing you money, yes. Paying you, making sure your service get paid for. Bro, I'm going to meet my end of the bargain. You, would you like a person like that or will you see a person like that as a competition? No, definitely not no See, you got a sense. Yeah, no. You got a mind on your head. No, nah, I don't see no one as competition. That's bringing you money, especially bringing you money. Especially if they bringing me bread, bro. That's that's a that's a business. That's a partnership. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's eat. Let's work. How am I going? What? Nah, nah. If you, anyone who's on different time and aside from that, y'all got to get it together, bro, respectfully. Because if somebody's bringing you some bread... We working. <laughs> we working. You Your feel case me? closed, man. <laughs> we working, bro. Case that's closed. It. I don't have nothing to say. <laughs> um, you know, so that's the problem, you know, with people. You know what I mean? They don't want to give you respect because they feel like they're on a little level higher than you. But it's all delusional. It is, bro. Mind thinking. Because mm -hmm. if you don't own the company, you own nothing. You don't own shit, bro. How are you going to own 100% of nothing? Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Jay-Z don't spoke to y'all. And y'all right. admire Jay-Z. Come on. Stop playing. And you cannot own 100% of nothing. You got to at least own 50% of the company, man. Or some percentage. Some percentage, yo. You some percentage. Me? I believe Jay-Z didn't even own 15% of the net store. I think it was only He would like, put 0.1%, but he yeah, owned something. Yeah, but he owned some, And that one, that 0.1% was billions of dollars. Absolutely. So man. it's like, listen, go. I'll take it. I'll take it. You feel me? Because yeah. some people don't, they claim to be smart and no business, but they don't. No. Bills got to get paid. Mortgages got to get paid. Literally. Kids got to go to school. We, we need money. Eat. We need bread, bro. We got to put feelings on the side. 100%, yo. Okay. Now, how would you feel? I'm going to ask you another question. Let's say one of your teammates, right? Because mm -hmm. we got... What's up? You have a friend. You're doing a podcast. And all of a sudden, they branch out. But y'all still friends. And they start their own podcast. How would you feel about that? Would you feel like, you know what? I like that because now they're building their own stuff. It's going to be more for us. Or would you feel like they're being sneaky? They're trying to take what you got. Like, it's a... Because I've been in this situation. So, like, it's it's like... It's, it depends on the scenario, you know what I'm saying? Like, depends. It was a it was a mindset thing for me too. It's really a mindset See, thing because it's go. like sometimes your mind is tricking you, yes, right? Yes, because it's like sometimes you may like think, Scarface and Billy D. Yeah, like sometimes you might think someone has, you know, animosity or a, a hidden agenda. Sometimes that person might just be looking up to you. You know what I'm saying? Like. They see what you're doing and they want to be inspired. like you. Yeah, they're inspired. They're you know inspired. What I'm they want to show you how cool they are. Yeah. They want to show you they could help you. They want to show they could help you build. But your mind is playing trick on you like you're the ghetto boys or something. Yep. Yep. And that's happened. I've been in that. I, see? I'm not going to sit here and say I haven't felt some type of way about certain situations. And then you take it the whole, you take, take it, it wrong. Yep. You took throw it a fit. 
You think they after your spot? Yep. Your spotlight? Maybe nah, what? bro. It's not even like that. But sometimes it do be like yeah, that. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> it's like that. You sometimes gotta watch the snakes. Like yeah. You definitely gotta watch yeah, the snakes. But that's where communication comes into play. Cause like I keep it real with anybody. Like I am like, yo, if you got something to get off your chest, if I got something to get off my chest, I'm gonna let you know. Like respectfully. Respectfully. Absol- listen. I try to keep it as respectful as possible, you know? Like and humble. You know what I mean? I I don't wanna cut you off because uh my personal mentor, DJ Hard Hand Harry, shout out to DJ Hard Hand Harry. He watches every interview. Mm. And he grades shout them. Shout out to you, bro. <laughs> now he's an OG. Okay, As I like fact, I fuck with the OGs. He's in the industry. He was okay. uh he was Wyclef first DJ. Mm. He was the Fuji's first DJ. Dope. He was the uh he was the uh, publicist for Patra, publicist for Drew Hill. He worked with Angie Martinez before. <laughs> okay. Now, <laughs> I had to throw that out there, right? Yeah, I had to do that. Because some people are very disrespectful. Nah, they right. think they're the only one who could be disrespectful. But nah, they don't right. understand when you Haitian, you are automatically disrespectful. <laughs> you put Gangsta, on bro. <laughs> That's right. Automatic. It comes. It's in your DNA. It's in the DNA. You, you can't even me? be mad at it. Matter of fact, forget the DNA. We're going to go it. somewhere else. It's in your nucleolus. Mm. Mm. <laughs> For those who even know what that is, you feel me? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's in your, it's in your double helix. Uh-huh. How about that? Yeah. Now y'all done lost. Y'all lost. Right, right. You understand? Right. So y'all gonna have to Google about. some stuff. Right, See, right. when I speak, you gotta have Google next to you. Have it next to you, bro. Y'all learning. <laughs> you know y'all what learning. What you feel me? You can't just you ad- always adapt. be open to learning, yo. We always. Don't, we learn don't know from a shit. master. Facts. Learn from them. Yeah, but you know this is just. Now back to you, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> now you so, do, so, Listen, I'm, I'm a tourist, right? This. Tourists get very personal, especially when they feel that you know you disrespected them. And they get very mad nah, to I the point you, where they wanna they wanna do something stupid. But I'm too wise for that now. You know what I'm saying? In fact, we gotta keep uh, it cool. Yeah, keep it cool. Keep so it now cordial. with you, Harlem, um, work with uh, did we mention Rock Nation? Nah, we didn't. We didn't. <laughs> He's an in off for Rock Nation. Facts, facts. Shout now, out. how did that come about? <laughs> um, shit. Uh, I gotta shout out my girl Desi. Desi works with EQ Distro. That's a distribution company under Rock Nation. Um, you see how close I am? I'm sorry, the hard hand Harry. Go ahead. Man, I'm sorry. Man. Nah, you good, bro. Uh, so she hit me up. She reached out to me about a specific artist that I've, I've been working with for years. Um, that was working with EQ since they started. Um, so he's like, yo, what's up with this artist? I'm like, you, like you manager her? I'm like, yeah, we were, you know, I'm on her management team, uh, set up a meeting to get her back on board with EQ. <clears throat> and then, um, yeah, Desi, she made me an A&R for EQ just cause like, you know, I have so many artists to work with. Really? So many artists that I could get on board with EQ, you know, just educate them about the distribution company and, you know, whoever's with it, we work, you know, if you're not with it, it's cool, you know, but if you're with it. Just know you got a whole team behind you. You got Airs Entertainment behind you, you know, pushing your music, like helping you with a whole lot more than just putting the music out. Like, you know, we're helping you with promotion. We're helping you with going over your analytics and demographics. We're helping you with copywriting, publishing, you know what I'm saying? Like Spotify playlist pitching, you know? So for those that want to work, hit me up. So <laughs> how is it like in the Rock Nation building, man? But I'm not going to lie, like... When I stepped foot in that building, I was like, yo. You're nervous. I don't know. Not even nervous. I was just like, yo, finally. Like, damn. Like, I'm like, I should have been here. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's going on? You know? But, you know, it's all about timing. You know? But it felt great to just be in there and, like, see the environment, see everybody who works there. And it's a it's a really dope environment. And it's a lot you can learn in there, too. Like, I can't, it's, I can't, I can't even put everything out there. But, like, it's lit. It's so lit. being in yeah, be- it's lit. They even got a school. They, like Rock Nation has a school. Yeah, like, LIU. Yeah, right? I'm like, wow. They, they got like, a, they got something going on with LIU, which I got my doctorate degree from. Stop mm, playing with me, man. Stop playing with this man, bro. Stop Yo, playing. education is key. Stop bro. playing. You don't know Knowledge what you're stepping is power, on. Power, bro. You don't know Come what on. you're stepping on. Big you, steppers. You feel me? I'm not gonna say that. Let's stay quiet <laughs> and humble. So, so now, your Rock Nation building. You see big men talking. Now, Rock Nation building. Have you ever met? Emory Jones. I have not met Emory Jones. Ty Ty. 
Not my top. Oh, these dudes, they, they ain't coming to Bill yeah, again. They, they not in the, I mean, at least not when I'm there. You know, what about the, there, the other guy, the yeah. light-skinned one? What's his name? There's another one. I forgot his name. <laughs> he said the light-skinned one. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm sorry, brother. There's just so many names. Now, you know who I'm talking about. I know who I'm talking about. Right. It just, it just can't Bless. come in my head yet. He's um he's Jay-Z, right, um, right-hand man. He's always in the games with Jay-Z. Um, he's, uh, as a matter of fact... I think he the one that bought the idea of the gold chair. Mm. You know, you know, Rock Nation got the, the gold chair, chair, but I think I forgot the guy's name. I'm sorry, man. Uh, his, <laughs> his name is in my head, but I just can't pull it out. Okay. Yeah. So, um, how is the talent looking like in Rock Nation? Well, talent's amazing, bro. Like, I mean, the last time I was there, um, shout out Flan J. You know, Flan J. She uh, plays for the um, LSU basketball team, but she also is working with EQ, putting her music out. Well, she's an artist also. Yeah, yeah she's, she's fire too. Don't she's, sleep. Shout out Flan J. Um, I did a media run with her one day, and um, the last, the last place we went was the Rock Nation building. She got to visit it and check out the Plains merch. You know, um, they blessed her with some merch and stuff. We heard a lot of unreleased music. You know what I mean? They was connecting her with some producers and stuff. Like it was dope. Um, the talent in EQ is is hard. Like it's hard. Hard talent, like meaning dope, even, super yeah, dope, super dope, super dope, super dope. Like, and you'd be surprised who's with EQ. Like, a lot of big artists is with EQ. You know what I'm saying? And um, I think it's really just a dope platform, you know, because compared to like a lot of distributions, you know, you usually got to pay like that yearly or monthly subscription and stuff. Like with EQ, you work with EQ, you don't got to do that. You know, you just they just want you to be consistent with putting music out. You know, like they they. They want you to follow a formula of putting out at least one song a month. For rappers, you can do two songs a month. R&B, like at least one song a month. You know what I'm saying? And for any DSP, uh, digital streaming platforms, um, you want to put your music out three to four weeks in advance. You know, so like, you know, these DSPs, music every every day, every week, it's over like eighty thousand songs. You know, being released. You know, so it's like. They need time to listen to all this music, process it, you know what I'm saying, approve it, you know? So the sooner you upload it, the more chance you have of getting your music on the DSP's playlist, like Spotify's actual big playlist, Apple Music big playlist, Tidal's big playlist, you know? <clears throat> um, and then, you know, that that creates a whole formula for you to, to market your song before it drops. So you, know, you do photo shoots. See, now I'm getting into my management artist development, you know, like I, that's what I, I do. I, I kind of sense that's where yeah, you're going. Yeah, that's where I'm going with it, you know, but it's like you got three to four weeks to promote a song before it drops. You got to push heavy on social media and not just Instagram. Some artists focus too much on just Instagram when there's so many other platforms out here. You got to push on every platform just as hard. So you know, you make your TikToks, your thrillers, you know what I'm saying, teasing the song. You do a photo shoot for the song, you know what I mean? You do a live performance for the song. You drop a lyric video. Like, there's so much you could do, you know? A lot of artists just think posting 15 to 30 seconds of their song on Instagram is enough, you know? And it's not, especially if you're not boosting it. Instagram allows you to boost your posts. The only people, and based off Instagram algorithm, I'm just putting it out there, like, they make it hard for people to see your shit, like unless you're really lit yeah. on Instagram. You know, like they're kind of forcing you to put money into their platform. Absolutely. It's a free platform. Yeah, There's only so much they're gonna allow you to do to get, to get for free. Partner. You know, you gotta put money in this shit. So it's like, all right, I'm in. I'm from New York. I already got New York on board, locked and loaded, tuned in with my music. What about Cali? What about Houston? What about Texas? Philly? New Jersey? Like, you know what I'm saying? Fact. These people don't know about me. Put your Put your post and your content out there for people to see you. You know what I'm saying? And then guess what? People fuck with it. They will reach out. They will reach out. They'll hit you up for opportunities. Now you got a reason to travel to Cali, Arizona, Texas for a performance, for a Miami. show. For You know what I'm saying? Miami. Like, you know, so like that's why advertising is a major key in this industry, bro. Like, and don't and don't think that the biggest artist you know ain't, ain't advertising. Like, McDonald's is a billion dollar company. They still yeah, advertise. Absolutely. Sprite. Absolutely. Any, you name it. The biggest companies, you see them every day on YouTube, commercials, streaming, movie platforms. Like They're still putting themselves out there. So what makes you think just putting a simple post on Instagram is enough? Like You got to put money to make money. This, you know this, this, like, this guy's dope. He's very dope. And I'm going to continue talking to him, working with him. 
and I'm going to introduce him to some folks. Now, you know, I'm a zoo, right? I got to ask you this question, you know what I'm saying? What's I, up, bro? I'm, 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 a, I'm a real Haitian from Haiti, was born there. Um, I definitely have respect for the Haitian culture. For absolutely. Sure. I'm, I was about to ask you, I'm about to ask you this. Now, being in the industry for so long and being around people, have you ever worked with any young, talented, up-and-coming Haitian artists or Zo artists? Have you? I got to think. Well, you got to think. I got to think. Because there's so many artists, bro. So um, many. Like, personally, I would say no. But I have, I feel like I have interviewed a couple um, and have had some that have performed at my shows. But like personally, like as far as management, artist development, I'd say no. But I'm open to working with a, a dope Haitian artist for sure. Well, that's like, cool. You interview, sure. like, you interview Big Rome. Big Rome, yes. Yeah, shout out Big Rome. Facts. Jamaican, Word. Yeah, right. he brought the energy. He did a live performance in the lab, which is dropping very soon. Make sure y'all stay tuned. So yeah. Yeah. I know I've been slacking on it, bro. It's a lot going on, but I got you. I got you. you know? <laughs> All, right. All right. Listen, I, I appreciate this guy. I think this guy, Mr. Ez Harris, is extremely fundamentally sound. Um, it's extremely, extremely seasoned in terms of the industry. And I can see big things happening in this guy's future in terms of entertainment. And Oh, yeah. We're not stopping over here, bro. I respect that. Regardless. You, you, you said it, but you kind of like marveled through it. You didn't really... Break it down. Now, I'm going to ask you to break it down. Because me and you, in a way, we kind of do similar things. Gosh, the synergy it's, right here. It's, it's, it's a lot of synergy. Just, artists has turned me off. So I'm not crazy about artists anymore. Back then, I would see an artist online. Now, oh, is he hot? Let me hit him up. I don't do stuff like that. Man. <laughs> I felt that. I felt yeah, that, bro. I'm dead serious because when you get to know them, they're not really serious they're about not, it. They're yeah. not hungry. They don't have no passion. Sometimes you be more hungry than they, they yeah. are for themselves. Yeah, the reason why uh -huh. I still mess with my nephews because that's my nephew. <laughs> Other than that, you know what I'm saying? I can't put all the energy out. You got to come with the energy. So right. now let me ask you a question. Right. Well, let me, let, let, let me lay this out. How do you take an artist from nothing something. and make them something? Make them a Rihanna. Make them a Cardi B. Make them a, a Megan Thee Stallion. Even a Scarlet. Let's go. How do you do that? What's the process? Bro, listen. <clears throat> Honestly, I'm still going through that process with <laughs> several artists. You feel me? Like, it's a... It's not an easy journey. Um, consistency, like that's been a major key in, in this conversation today. Like social media, marketing, advertising, um, trust. Trust is big. Like a lot of these artists, like if you don't have a team, like one, you got to get a team. Like you need a team that you can trust. That's one. Then you got to think about like your brand, like how do you want to brand yourself like as an artist, as a personality, as an influencer, you know what I'm saying? And then it's really just putting yourself out there, you know what I'm saying? Like there's so many platforms to get yourself out there. Look at Scarlett. I seen Scarlett before, like I didn't even know Scarlett made music. I was following Scarlett on TikTok because of, you know, her condition with her lips. Scar lips. Yeah, like she had, she had this TikTok where she would, you know, talk about her condition and do other sh funny content. And then next thing you know, this is New York. I'm like, oh shit! Like, <laughs> I like, I'm like, that. oh Scarlett, you make music? Like, oh, what's up? Like, hold up, content, content, bro. Content. Like, she had her platform. You know, she blew up off one thing. But of course, we're all multi hyphenated. You know, we can all do multiple things. So it's like she took her comedy and her platform, and now let it be known that she can also make music. And guess what? That shit took off. Like. Now Swiss Beats signing her and shit. Like, Epics, you know what I'm Swiss saying? Beats. Yeah, what? like, I'm like, yo, respect to you, girl. We gonna work soon. I've been, we gonna, we gonna do something. We're I'm not a something. clout chaser. Cause that it's a very dangerous thing. Chasing clout, you might end up off a cliff, <laughs> right? <laughs> I knew about this girl since last year. Facts. Shout out to my homie Precise, real precise, real precise. Sent me her. Because, you know, I was looking for people to do songs with Big Rome with. Mm. 
And Ripper says, like, yo, check this out. I work with this guy named Ace um, Wood or Wood Ace or something like that. That's mm-hmm. her manager. Okay. And why don't you hit him up and try to do a song with Big Rome and her? That'd be dope. That would have been be crazy. Dope. But, yeah. you know, I believe in what's for you is going to be for you no matter no what. Matter the man stop yeah. it. Yeah. Um, I spoke to Ace Wood and nothing really transpired. Mm. Uh, we spoke. He's a very cool dude on the phone and... We spoke and uh and we were supposed to get together or something like that. And nothing transpired. And then out of nowhere, just like you, I heard this is New York. Get the fuck out of here. I'm like, what? I'm like, hold up, hold up. <laughs> this lady looked familiar. <laughs> cause I I ponder on it. Yeah. This is New York. I'm like, what? And then cause people started making fun of it at first. Right, right, right. right. Um, my nephew sent it to me with all the red flags and all that. I'm like, man, nonsense. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nonsense. Yo, she took a page out of 69 book. <laughs> nonsense. Then I saw it, it kept going. Kept going. It kept going, it kept going. And then I'm like, oh, I heard about this. Yo, my man put me onto this girl. Mm-hmm. And I call up my man, Real Precise. Real Precise was like, yep, 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 of course. I gave you the manager's number. I told you you spoke to the, you spoke to the manager. I'm not saying it's for clout, by the way. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes in our journey, we encounter certain things. We, we just got to shed light on it. Because nice. what happened in this industry, this industry is a very disrespectful industry. industry. It's very disrespectful. When people think you lightweight, they're going to stump on you. Mm-hmm. That's another thing because everybody looking for the heavyweight, and they don't respect the lightweight. Don't sleep on the underdog. Bro. The brother, yeah, don't they don't sleep yeah. on the underdog. You, bro. A lot of people look at me as an underdog, bro. And you, I, I'm so a look big how big stepper, I am. Bro. Facts. Look I'm, how big I am. They look yeah. at me like they think I'm, 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 I'm lightweight. Keep sleeping, bro. Keep you know what I'm saying? That's cool. They're gonna so, see. So when she, when 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 my man, um. Told me that, I swear, I had to go look for the number. I had to call that dude again and make sure it was him. <laughs> and I was like, damn, son. But then, I believe in this, man. What's for you, it's going to be for you. Yeah, bro. What was meant to happen, it's going to happen. Just this might is not why, be the right time, you know? It, 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 it's, it's universal not the right, timing. This is why I'm on dick, timing. This is why I'm on dick ride. This is why I'm on cloud chase. I'm on my business. And I show love and support. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Let the people... Or let the person enjoy their moment. Stop exactly. trying to inject yourself in people's moment. <laughs> this is what this industry has in it. You know, your moment arrived and everybody want to be part of your moment. Everybody want to jump on the bandwagon. Where were you when she was on the side of the street crying? Yeah, they ain't believing you then. Like DJ <laughs> Khaled said, they ain't believing us. Yeah, like, they ain't believing. Where were you when God she was did. born insane on TikTok? <laughs> Did you send this TikTok to your friend and be like, follow her? You did. Right, right. Now she blew up. You want to be part of her nah, story. Yep. You right. want to be part of her glory. He's like, yeah, I've been following him ever since. Like, all right, bro. Yeah. All right. You want to be right. part of her blessing. Man, quit that shit, man. Right, right. Get your own blessings. You know right, what I'm saying? At this point. Yeah, man. So, at this point. So, continue. You said you, you know, uh, you're still trying to figure this shit out. Yeah, bro. It's a process, bro. Like, I mean, I got, I got... Artists that have a lot of potential, you know, like it's just, it takes work though, you know, like, you know, um, sometimes, you know, some people are able to blow up overnight, you know, through TikTok, like TikTok has helped a lot of people. Recently, yeah, TikTok. You know what I'm saying? Like, but it's really just at the end of the day, content and consistency, like it's going to pay off and know that you got to invest into your platform, into your craft, into your brand, like put money to make money. You know what I'm saying? Energy gets reciprocated. So the energy, money, energy that you put in will get reciprocated. You feel me? Like, that's the best way I could put it. You feel me? Look, I respect this guy. I like this guy. He's an inspiration. He's definitely going to come to the Williamsburg office. I'm inviting him. Be in there. He's going to be in there. Now, you know what I'm saying? Because we're we're running out of time, let the people know what you got going on and let them know where to find you and how to find you and how to... You know, interact with you and become part of your movement. Word. Um. So y'all can find me and follow me at Airs. That's A I R S underscore Harris. You could also follow Airs Entertainment. A I R S Entertainment. You feel me? We do again YouTube advertising, Spotify playlisting, events, artist development, music marketing. Like you name it. We here. We here to help. We here to work. We here to build. You know what I'm saying? So don't hesitate to shoot me an email. Shoot me a DM. You know, I may not respond. 
on time or on your time, but I will respond. You feel me? Like I will definitely will get back to you and we could work. We do events monthly. We got on the radar tapped in. We bring the energy. So Gabe will be at pretty much damn near every show if and when he's available. And um, yeah, just stay tuned, yo. Next show's gonna be we got June twenty fifth with Riley Lane's big R and B superstar. You feel me? R and B show at Gems Bar June twenty fifth, followed by the next Bring the Energy July thirtieth. Another Bring the Energy August twelfth. So like, we consistent all year. Like the motion is in motion and commitment. You know I mean? That's it. That's it, bro. And shout out to Scripps. Shout out to Janelle. You feel me? Shout out for this interview, this podcast. Like, make sure y'all tap in, like, comment, subscribe, show love. Because when you create your own creation, whatever it is, you're going to want that shit reciprocated. So, absolutely. Tap in. You know absolutely. I mean? As you guys know, this is the talk of the city, DJ Script. You lounging with Script. You know what I'm saying? And y'all already know where to find me. Listen, it's too much. Just go on Google, type in Script. S C R I P Z underscore T V mm -hmm. and underscore and you're gonna find me. Everything. You're gonna find lounging with script. You're gonna find Zoes in the industry. You're gonna find script TV. You're gonna find everything, man. If you're not Googleable, you gotta step up your hustle and your step grind. Up. You heard? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So oh, we can show you how to get verified on Google too. That's a fact. Absolutely. We're gonna do that. Yeah. Listen, he coming to the office. Yeah, we can. Because I'm about to start a new situation. He's in the situation. Oh, so shit. <laughs> With that said, I'm out. Peace, love, and happiness. Peace and love, bro. Appreciate you, bro.